Hi, and welcome to the Jordan Kinda Knows Something Show, where I'll be talking about health, fitness, life, and anything else I kinda know something about. Hello everyone, and welcome back to another episode. Now, today's episode is another super exciting episode. Today I talk to Cindy Liu. Cindy Liu is a published author, a personal trainer, a traveler, craniosacral therapist, and a Theta Healer teacher and practitioner. So today I am talking to Cindy Liu about Theta Healing, what Theta Healing is, how it can help you, the benefits of Theta Healing, and if you're a practitioner out there, we also discuss how Theta Healing can help you and your patients. I hope you enjoy this episode and let's get into it. Alrighty. Hello, Cindy Lou, and welcome to the podcast. Um, Hi, Jordan. Good to see you. Yeah, no worries. So, um, Cindy Lou, we know each other because we worked together back um, when I was in uh, Vancouver or New Westminster. Um, we worked at a gym for, I believe it was two years, a little over two years. So, got to know each other through there. Um, Cindy Lou, of course, is a personal trainer amongst a whole bunch of other things. So if you didn't mind, Cindy Lou, maybe um, did you mind introducing yourself, um, kind of what you're doing right now, where you're living, maybe, um, whatever you feel like opening okay. up with. Well, um, I'm Cindy Lou, and as Jordan said, we met through being a personal trainer, but the personal training side of my life is kind of like the current mostly of where I've been to. I'm, I'm a big fan of um, living your best life and doing lots of things. I've never been one for just one certain career. One of the things that my life has always followed though is um, a being a holistic type of a lifestyle of some sort. It's always been a part of my world from being a vegetarian to cleansing and fasting, um, learning about energy and essential oils to cranial sacral therapist I became. And um, my one that's ran, I've been doing for almost... I guess 16, 17 years now is uh, Theta Healing, which is one of my biggest passions because it works with absolutely everything that I already have learned and what I do in my life. And it empowers other people and I just love it for what it does. And so that's kind of me and I'm still living in the New West. I love to travel. I love meeting new people and experiencing new things. I've traveled a lot around the world, been to lots of different countries and I really have been and have a very blessed life. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And Cindy Lou and I have always had some amazing conversations whenever we were at mm-hmm. work about everything. So she's uh, definitely, uh, we can definitely talk about anything and everything. So that's what I, uh, that's what I really liked. But um, I was really interested about learning about Theta Healing um, while I was at work and while discussing it with Cindy Lou at work. Um, It's a very interesting thing. It was brand new to me. I had never heard of it before. Um, And then when kind of I learned more about it, it it made a lot of sense to me in the sense that um, you knew kind of what it was working um, towards. I kind of knew or I kind of learned the benefits. So I thought it would be cool to talk about it today um, to everybody else and to all the listeners um, and to kind of um, dig a little further into theta healing. So um, maybe if you don't mind starting out with what exactly theta healing is for anybody that doesn't know. Well, theta healing, first of all, is quite big in the world compared to when I very first started with it. Um, it is in many different languages and it is for anybody that has the belief system or the idea that they are influencing their life in some way, shape or form. Like by your belief systems or your emotions that you do actually have some control over what's happening in your world. So if you believe that and you believe that you can influence it or create your own reality or anything along that line, um, then you would find in Theta Healing very intriguing of the concept of how using this modality is very empowering for you to work on yourself. And that's one of the things that I liked about it for all the um, modalities I experienced throughout my life was this is one that you can use completely on yourself and it works well with other modalities too. So it's not limiting. Like some modalities they say, Oh, well you can only do it with this or that. But theta healing is one that's, you know, pretty much for anybody that believes that it's 
what it works with is that first of all, you have to have that belief that you actually believe you create your own reality. That's kind of a, a given. And then the second part is what you're learning how to do is um, understanding the brain waves and understanding that a theta brain wave is what we, um, what you learn how to attain without having to meditate for hours and hours and hours. Like the back in time, you know, people that the monks and things, the people that really got into heavy meditations and they meditate for hours or fasting and things like that would actually create a theta brain wave because they knew that there was some, some magical thing with the theta brain wave that caused you to be able to see things as energy, feel it, know that you just go beyond your reality, almost be able to see things as, as energy and also to make changes. So with theta healing, that's basically the basis of it. So through muscle testing, and I know there's lots of different ways to muscle test and in theta healing, we have a specific way we muscle test to find out what you think, what you believe. Um, it can help you change your world if you want to. Again, it's up to the individual person because it, we have this concept of free will. So you can't make anybody be something or change anything for anybody. Even if you're looking at their lives and you can see like, oh my God, like they're just going down a path that you can maybe see that might not be the best for them. It's still their path. And data healing is also about, there's no judgment about right or wrong or good or bad. It's about what's working for you in your reality for what you're wanting to experience because we're just all here having experiences and what is working against you. And then looking at what's working against you for what you're wanting to experience and deciding what you want to do about it. And so what would happen was is that if you came to see me and you said, I, my question I would ask you is, well, what do you want to change about your life or what's happening in your life that you're finding unpleasant? And we'd have a discussion around it. And through muscle testing, we find out what you actually believe that's creating this. And a belief is just a thought that you think a lot over and over again. And some of it can be um, ingrained, like some studies are saying it can be in your DNA, it can be in your genetics, it can be in many Many different ways they're always discovering things about us as beings and it's changing constantly but through theta healing we believe um, the modality believes that it's in your dna and it's in your genetics and it's on a soul level and a history level that you could have belief systems that you're not really aware of and then all of a sudden they start to manifest in your reality because something triggered it to come forward and you know like i say it can work for you or against you so what we do then is if you said okay well say you muscle tested that um that you're well, i can just give me something very vague very general um that you know everybody hates me say you went with that okay so maybe you had the you're experiencing all all this these people being mean to you or something and maybe you have this or would you like to keep it okay as much as a negative situation for some people it also can be a very positive outcome that they're learning with that belief system. So it's not all like it's bad. It's like, okay, what is this, what has this taught you? And some people might thought, well, it taught me to stand up for myself or it taught me, um, you know, who I am, or it could be all kinds of things. And it's just about, okay, do you want to change it? And if you do, then as a practitioner with that person's permission, I would put myself in a theta brainwave, which would allow me to see it as energy and witness it to be changed for you. Okay. So, but how would somebody, how would somebody know to come and see you though through all of that? So you say it's it's about a belief system. How would how would somebody know that they have these beliefs um, and know that they would want to come in see a theta healer? Well, usually when someone's life is not going the way they want, and usually in my experience. They usually come to me after they've done everything else, actually. Right. It's okay. usually unless they know somebody that knows somebody that said, hey, you know what? Um, I went and saw this person because there's lots of theater. There's thousands and thousands of theaters in the world, actually, now in all different languages. I think the books are all in 16 different languages now, which okay. is very cool to see. Um, so they would come. So when I get people come to see me, they're usually through a referral. Right. Um, very few go to my website to, that they're searching it out. They've usually heard from, about from somebody. Um, but what drives them to even look is usually something in their life is very unpleasant mm -hmm. and they can't seem to change it. And that's usually the 99% of the reason they come and see me. And it could be physical sickness. It could be a uh, bad relationship, money situations, job, um, 
any any of all of those like there's no rule of what there's nothing off limits in regards to what people can change in their world they can decide but they're the ones that get to decide and yeah that's basically most of my clients and people like i teach classes and i've been teaching for a long time and when people come to take classes is because they want to learn how to do it for themselves so they don't have to go see a practitioner and even still sometimes like i have my students still that will seek me out or other fellow students when they get stuck on something because our mind is a, is just so amazing and if it's got something that it's using in your reality even though it might feel like it's working against you it'll hang on to it and sometimes you hide it from yourself and so it's hard for you to figure out what it is so when you go to a different practitioner you get a different insight of you know well it could be this and through muscle testing helps you kind of figure out what that is um, so do you, is it a common finding that people are hiding these things in the muscular system? You were talking about using the muscle assessment. Is this a common finding or how essentially would you know that that's a, that's a thing? Well, muscle testing is kind of a vague word because muscle testing right. we do is like, you're just, you're pulling these fingers apart, right? Yeah. Which, what this is doing is actually tapping in to all that you are, everything, right? So um, and this can, this, if, if the person is hydrated and um, they're aligned and everything, this is very, very accurate in way mm. to be able to testing in the way we do. I mean, there's all kinds of different ways people muscle test, but people also know they can feel it. They get unsettled when you start digging around them, they get emotional. They know you're getting close to something. And at the same time, they get to keep whatever they want. Um, I've seen people have things stored all in their bodies, like from, organs to muscles to bones to you know just you you'll find usually when i start working on some people but sometimes will come with a pain a physical pain and then when we're done they have none because we cleared everything that was tying it sometimes people need other different things to help them um but the bottom line is, is if people it's all about them so no matter even if they wanted to get better and this is through and even if they went to a medical doctor they'll even tell you when people are, are really extremely sick the doctors will do everything for them and some they'll have like maybe three patients that have the same disease same diagnosis it's the same say cancer in the same amount of cancer in all their bodies and they all have the same treatments and one will get really will get better and two will die and they can never figure that out and what it comes down to is that one person's desire to live or decided that you know what i want to get better and i want to live and it's not that these other two people didn't want to get better it's just that maybe there's something within them that you know it was just too hard or they had too much other things going on but they do know it's tied to the emotional and mental well-being of any person and as you know in society the emotional and mental well-being of is affecting a lot of people for all kinds of things that are that are happening so we know how powerful our thoughts are and we know how powerful our emotions are. So, you know, finding it in the body is, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very, like, it just is. And even when people, so even if you came to me with something happening in your life and your physical body is feeling really, really good, quite often, once we start working on something, people will have a, a physical uh, response to it. They'll have like, you know, oh, all of a sudden I got a pain here and then it's gone. Or all of a sudden they'll feel, um, really super emotional and then it'll go away so you can't separate the two and i've had you know when people have done like when you go right to muscles it's a long um answer for your short question but when people um say they have a, a muscle i'm going to give myself an example okay so mm -hmm. chronic shoulder issue right i have done massage uh, myofascial what is that one that you do that the, the fascia does with the fascia i can't remember what it's called uh yeah like fascial whatever. stretch therapy yep yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah yeah i went and did that it all was lovely okay mm -hmm. and i i did all everything and there was no, no reason why it, it shouldn't be better okay right. and but i also know that from the experiences in my life that there's emotional stuff in there stored that mm -hmm. if i actually even just touch it or even put my conscious there to just kind of meditate on I can see and feel what's in there that I need to release. Now, even being that I know that, I can be a stubborn person. So it's like, mm -hmm. you know what? I'm gonna hang on to this. For whatever reason, it might be doing something for me in my reality. Right. And then the day that I decide that, you know what? I'm done carrying whatever this is, and then I can release it and I'm better. So, right. yeah. Right, yeah. Answer?
Yeah, so that's interesting because the kind of reason why I wanted to talk to you about Theta Healing was because about a month ago, I kind of, we were learning about a concept called central sensitization um, in physio school. And um, it kind of reminded me of what you do in Theta Healing because essentially central sensitization is kind of the nervous system being overactive, even if there is not an injury or a specific injury present. So um, that's kind of a super, super short, basic explanation of that. Um, It's way more diverse than that. But essentially, there is sometimes like an emotional um, aspect to it, a psychological, biopsychosocial kind of aspect to it. And um, there can be like catastrophizing um, through a patient, maybe fear, um, and avoidance of movement and kind of these psychological kind of factors to it. Um, and I would assume maybe like a belief system of, of, of course, their injuries being worse than it is, maybe there's something wrong, whatnot. So it kind of made me think about theta healing and this belief system and, and if there are other beliefs also psychologically that may be affecting person's body. So that was kind of how I tied it in, of course, you know, being a physio student, everything or a lot of things are do are kind of incorporated with the muscular system and like pain in the body and stuff like that. So that's what kind of triggered me to want to contact you and discuss theta healing a bit further. But essentially, like central sensitization, for example, um, involves or or is involves more kind of like a chronic chronic injury. So. I'm just kind of interested acute versus chronic. Um, Of course, you know, me thinking about theta healing, I would assume that um, people that have these chronic beliefs or these chronic negative beliefs are more, I guess, susceptible to developing maybe injuries or pain or whatever, or um, those emotions maybe contributing to all that stuff. But is there an acute aspect? So I just... I guess I'm wondering what the like relationship between acute or chronic is. Both. We, we, we do all of it because right. some, and again, it comes down to what they believe, but um, I've had both the sooner before the key is when someone gets injured. So let's address the one. Mm-hmm. So say the person that hurt, just hurt themselves last week, two days ago, the sooner they come to see if, if they, this is, if their cho- choice is this use alternative medicine and not the medical system, which is their choice. If they choose mm-hmm. that, the sooner they come to see a theta healer, um, if that's their choice, the better before the brain gets a chance to realize this is their new reality with their sore back. Okay. Mm -hmm. And so then they really embrace the injury and they go into all the things that that might entail. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, and I've seen that people have come to me, you know, um, with something that they just hurt themselves and before they get a chance to, to let it really register. And I just go in and I just deny the body that like, you just use the theta brainwave and going in. I know this might be a stretch for some of our listeners, but, it's like you you see everything as energy and you go in and you watch it go back to the way it's supposed to so it doesn't register in the body that it's injured, okay? Mm-hmm. So some things, you know, if you're a person out there that, that follows any of this kind of um, thought process, um, biology belief by um, Bruce Lipton, Dr. Bruce Lipton was a good one who wrote a really good book on explaining all about the non-placebo, the placebo energy uh, from the science perspective, gives you something more, if you need something more tangible right. but from that side. And then if you have the acute people, yeah, lots of emotions because it's a story you've been telling yourself for a long time. And if you've done everything like for fibromyalgia is another one. Like I worked with a lot of fibromyalgia people Okay. and, um, and that's real pain for them. And it took a long time for the medical people to be able to diagnose that, you know, because yeah. they couldn't find anything, they just, but these people are in serious pain yeah. and um, so much inflammation. And um, the people I've worked with with that, you go into, there's so much trauma in the body and so much emotions, things that they've experienced that some of they just worried because they're embarrassed or they're ashamed or it was just so traumatic that with, if again, they have to choose and they have to want, going and using the theta brainwave and using the modality theta healing in that process has helped people that I have worked on and uh, I can probably speak for a lot of my colleagues too that we've worked very successful in regards to that. And I'm not saying it cures anything. I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying it's a, it's another way if you wanted to to release things from the body. Right. Right. Yeah. N- now, I mean, I know I focused a lot more, and I've asked a lot on the muscular system, for example. So um, their beliefs may be um, hindering. Um, 
muscle, but is there anything else that um, that theta healing works on? Can can it involve the digestive system or thinking or um, what else does it benefit? Pretty much everything. Okay. Um, we teach, we teach, I teach one of my favorite classes that's part of the Theta Healing family of classes is the intuitive anatomy. It's one of my favorite classes to teach. Mm-hmm. You have to have all the other classes and the skills and learning how to do Theta Healing before mm-hmm. you get there. And it is for the person. It's not about learning to go work on somebody else. It's about working on yourself. And so what we do in that class is going into all the systems uh, that we are and working on the beliefs and emotions that are stored there. So it's very, it's not limited to anything. Like it's all about the person. So digestive systems, you know, like we have uh, Deanna Stiebel, who's the founder of Theta Healing, has a book that anybody can buy called um, Disease and Disorder. It's a really well-written book. And what she does in that book is A to Z. So it t- takes like, say, asthma. It says the medical system, how they treat it. It says what vitamins you could take, what herbs you could take, and then what emotions Theta Healing would deal with if, if they use that. For mm-hmm. all these diseases, that, and these are all diseases and clients that Deanna has worked on and right. has documented to help people. So it's not unlimited. And you, I'm always really surprised when people come to see me with one thing and we start talking about their lives and then it turns out to be another place in the body that's causing it. As you probably realize even when with um, physio, you know, you start that it's the knee and then it ends up being the shoulder. You right. know what I mean? Is where the problem is. It's no different. So yeah. it is just... And that's what I, I like about it. Like, I mean, I, I've been doing, like I say, almost 16, 17 years now, practitioner and teacher. And I have seen so many things that there's just nothing in me that I could ever say it doesn't work. It just works. Right. right. But the key thing that makes it work is because the people that want, are looking for something allow it to. Right. So is that yeah. the first step? Somebody needs to want to look for something? Yeah. They want yeah. to change something, just right. something. It doesn't matter what it is. Like I've had people come to me for, you know, just one thing I can see in their bodies and look at their body and their life. And I'm thinking, Oh my God, you have so many other problems here that are so more important than this one thing you want to talk mm-hmm. about, but this is the only thing they want to change. And right. it could be just as simple as that. I just would like to can't understand why I can't get a new job. Right. And then they'll go through all these things and I'll start talking to them about, well, what do you believe about this job? Like, do you believe you know, why I'm not smart enough or I'm not worthy, which is a, can be a common one, but it's pretty vague, but you know, or my dad told me I wasn't going to mount anything, things like that, that they forgot about that all of a sudden they're coming forward every time they try to get to a certain, maybe they're already kind of successful, but they want to really be successful. And that belief system maybe wasn't actually playing out yet, but now that they're reaching further, it starts to play out the doubt, whatever they learned when they were younger or anywhere along their time. It doesn't have to happen when you're little. It could be Anytime that you just stood there and believed something somebody told you about yourself and said, yeah, that's me. Okay, so this is going to be part of who I am. Right. So, yeah, it's, 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 it's just so magical. I just, I just love it. I've worked, on, I've worked on animals. I've worked on kids, you know, every, for all ages. Yeah. Right, right. So I liked how you stated before um, it's, it's beneficial with other modalities, correct? Uh, mm-hmm. Yeah, so – how would how would you yourself maybe use it with other modalities um, when you're when you're doing a treatment? Well, I was a cranial sacral therapist before I actually got into theta healing. And when I was a cranial sacral therapist, and I love that modality, it's very very powerful. I would get to a certain point sometimes with my clients, and it, their body just wouldn't go any further to correcting it. They'd feel better but not completely. And I started asking the question, isn't there something else that I could do to give them complete relief of whatever this is? Mm. And that's when Theta Healing came into my world. So once I took that, I slowly started offering it to my clients because you can't do anything without their permission with Theta Healing. That's the beauty of it. And so when they'd be on the table and I'd be doing cranial psychotherapy and I could feel like, say, I'd be in the middle of their back and I could feel that there's some issues about money and I would say, hey, um, you know, I'm feeling right here that it feels like you got some stress about money. And they might say yes. And I said, okay, well, do you want to talk about it? Would you like to release it? Because that seems to be hindering why the spine doesn't want to go where it needs to go. Mm-hmm. And most people, they just want to be all pain. They want to feel better. And so with cranial psychotherapy, it worked really, really well. I also have throughout my years of teaching, 
I've had massage therapists come and take it, um, Reiki practitioners, which Reiki is more um, common modality throughout the world. It's even used in hospitals now, which is just hands-on healing energy. Um, chiropractors, mm-hmm. I had um, a couple doctors, a surgeon. Um, they do, it depends on what your belief systems are, but you know, in life, it has been noted that doctors quite often meditate or prayer before they do surgeries. Same thing. It's just a focused thought. That's all prayer is. Focused right. thought, however you want to put with it. And so, yeah, I like I think in lawyers, I've had almost every kind of walk of life of career that's out there, like a lot of them, um, come and take it. And they usually do it because it's for yourself, right? It's about cleaning up you because the, mm-hmm. the happier you are, that's a big deal you take to the world if you did nothing else. Yeah. Yeah. So, I mean, is it always just like, are people always coming to see you just for pain specific um, factors? So is coming someone always coming to you for, to relieve pain, for example? Not so much anymore. No, In the okay. beginning, it used to be a lot of that. I do 98% of my clientele over the phone all over the world because mm-hmm. everything's just energy. Mm-hmm. I get a mix now. I get probably 40% that they let whatever happen manifest in their body and sickness. And then the other 60% are aware and want to get rid of it before it turns into that. Right. So they'll, they'll call me with, you know, I know that they're usually pretty aware people about their lives. Like I say, they understand that they have control over their reality and it's not so much the events, but how they respond to it. And that's where people get confused too, is that when I say to them, you have control over their reality, they go, well, how can I control what the government's doing or whatever is doing? That's not the point that the control you have is how you respond to that and mm-hmm. how you engage with that. That's where your power lies, which is a pretty big deal. So yeah, that's about how it lies. Um, there was a time in the beginning that it was a lot I would get would be, they're really sick. I would right. get people that were stage three, four cancer or yeah, really dark stuff. Like not dark stuff. I should say it's not dark, but not well. And so right. they, the journey was a lot harder to come back from. Whatever, right. Yeah. Right. Okay. So yeah, that's interesting to me, especially like what you were stating before it working best or it working well with other modalities. Right. So for me, I know one common thing or one common pattern in physio school, for example, is um, to help people with pain or with other or whatever they're coming in to see you for Um learning various modalities and learning various techniques, um, not one specific thing is going to help someone. So you kind of have to focus on multiple factors. So I found that um, pretty interesting. But what I'm interested in, um, I know you touched on it briefly before near the beginning, um, but when somebody comes in to see you, um, what is a treatment? What does it look like? What would a treatment with you look like? So when they, they come and they sit down, um, I w- my first thing that I do is I ask them, I ask them what it is that they want to change in their reality. Mm-hmm. And, you know, some people, that, some people are not sure. They just know that they, they don't like how they feel. And right. so, but that's the first question I ask them. I say, so what is it that you'd like to, to change in reality? And so then we start to have a conversation. And so some people, if it's their very first time and they don't know anything about the healing, are a little bit more guarded, you know, okay. about how far you're going to go into their lives. But once they realize that I can't do anything without their permission and that I'm not there to judge whether their lives are right or wrong, then they kind of relax a little bit. It's like, okay, so they'll tell me their story about what's happened, whatever it is, whether it's with a relationship, a job, uh, life, anxiety attacks, whatever is in their life that's the most dominant that they're having the most problem with, that's usually what they come to me for. Mm -hmm. And so then we'll have the conversation around you know, what happened? How does this, how does this play out in your reality? What are the events? And by those conversation, I'm being able to listen and hear what belief systems are running. And then through muscle testing, we can really pinpoint which one is causing them the problem right. that they're talking about. And through, then they do, I do some muscle testing on them. It's tons and tons of permission. You mm-hmm. know, is it all right if we check for this? Would you yeah. like that? Would you don't like that? And then when they're all done, 99% of the people, they feel different when, they're, when it's over. Right. You know, like, and everybody has a different experience depending on how open they are and if it is what they want. Right. Yeah. So it's probably very individualized in the sense that 
you can't necessarily give someone an X amount of treatments before they'll have the outcome that they want. So somebody coming in asking you, okay, how many times do I need to see you? It's, is it hard to, to give them that answer? I have a real trouble. I don't have a trouble with that answer. I've gotten a lot better with it. Okay. Because I'm not, I'm not one of those people that will say you need this many. Yeah. I always tell people, let's do one. Right. And let's see how you feel. Okay. And then go live your life a little bit and yeah. see what happens. Okay. And I says, you know, and then I, I like them to kind of let, live it out then. But I have, you know, fellow say healers that will say to people, you need four, you need five. And that's just how they, they roll. I've always been, let's see what happens. Because mm-hmm. sometimes, and it happens more times than not, if they're really ready for something they want to change, one will change that situation enough for them that they're good to go. And then right. what happens is they'll start to live their life with this new change and they'll discover there's other things that they would like to change. And that's usually what drives them back. It's never for the same thing. In my experience, it's always been the next thing mm. that they realize that, okay, I cleaned that up, but oh, whoa, well, there's this now and that doesn't work for me either. And they'll come and see me. And right. then some people um, get to the point like they just want to come to take a class and really spend three days just cleaning themselves up and getting them a tool that they can use on themselves. Right. Yeah. Okay. So is yeah. there any prep work for anybody? So before somebody makes the decision to come and see you, what essentially do you want them to need to think about or them to start thinking about? I, you know, but not really. No? I just ask them to come in that, you know, just, um, yeah, no. <laughs> I'm thinking to myself, no, I don't, okay. I don't, you know, like if it's on Usually, like I say, I see a lot of clients over the phone. So I always tell them that make sure that they're in a quiet space so they're mm-hmm. not going to be interrupted. Make sure they have a glass of water by because if I'm going to muscle test them, they have to be hydrated, which a lot of people aren't. And when we do muscle testing, when it's over the phone, we have a different process than we do in person. Okay. So um, that, but yeah, I know it's just about, you know, just decide, just be willing to be, be open. But most people they're already there. Like by the time they come to me anyways, they're, mm-hmm. they already are just so ready to change right. anything and everything. It, it, I, it's in, the, in my earlier stages of doing um, like probably good 10, 12 years ago, uh, I would get people which I kind of have to, you know, give them insight what to pre- prepare themselves for, but I don't get those clients anymore. The ones that come to me, like, they're just like, I heard about you. Can you, I have this situation. Can you help me? Right. And I'd say, well, I can only help you as much as you help yourself, but I sure can guide you to what you what, what might work for you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I know you just mentioned it, but online versus in-person. I know now with COVID, I think a lot of things are moving online. Um, is, is that, how is that a different process to in-person? Like would somebody, somebody like me, for example, I love to see people face to face. So if I'm doing physiotherapy, for example, I want to see a physio face to face. Whereas now like in school, we're learning a lot more on telehealth. So online physiotherapy and how to do initial assessments and all that online. Um, So for somebody who's a little bit hesitant to booking appointment online, um, are they still going to get the benefits that they would face to face or vice versa? Absolutely. Like they will, like it's because everything's just energy. Um, I do have a few clients that when I first moved to New West, because I originally lived in Saskatchewan for a long time and I had a school there for Mm -hmm. like a physical school where people would travel around the world to come and take classes. And I would see people physically a lot. And then as I changed my life and moved out, out here, I started to do more and more over the phone. And I was always doing some with them, but it just became more. But I do have people that are like that. So after a while ago, um, I was given a space at the gym where, where we both worked at, as you know. And um, I would use that every once in a while for those people that absolutely need to see someone in person. They have right. to. And right. for me, it's like it works either or, you know. Yeah. And now that because of COVID, I mean, it doesn't affect me so much because I actually prefer to do it over the phone mm-hmm. because what it does for me is it takes, I don't see you. And then I can really tap into all of you without Mm. actually physically being distracted by your physical presence, you know, for me into as a intuitive being. Yeah. So I, I really do like over the phone ones more so than in person. 
um, not the ones like that it's bad or anything, but for what I do. And then, of course, when I'm teaching workshops, then, you know, of course, I'm working on my students and it's more in person. Okay. So, okay. Yeah. So going into your workshops or going into your students and all of that. So if there's a practitioner out there, let's say a physiotherapist or um, anybody interested in theta healing, anybody interested in um, adding that to their resume and kind of incorporating it into their practice, um, how would they go about that? What do they need to do? Well, what they would do right now, Theta Healing never used to be able to be taught online. Okay. Deanna, the, the founder, has been forced down that, that way too. She's had to mm -hmm. do with her business to keep it going. Um, so now you can take the basic class and advanced class and the Big Deeper, which are the three basic class, like the three starter classes online. Mm -hmm. And there's lots of uh, instructors that are certified to do that. Your first class is, the basic is three days, the advanced is three days, the Big Deeper is two days. Each one of those classes has books and manuals that you would get, and then it's online through Zoom. And um, so you can Google fadehealing.com, which takes you to their major, major site in uh, Montana. I also have a website where we post classes on there. I don't have a whole lot of classes on there right now. I also do classes that are for my students that already are theta healers, so they're kind of like practice type Zoom classes for them to actually work on their issues or whatever that's happening in the world. Mm -hmm. But my website is uh, fadahealinginstitute.ca. Okay. And so um, you can always go there. I have a Facebook page also, uh, Cindy Lou's Corner mm -hmm. on Facebook, which we post classes there and um, upcoming things. And, and, you know, it's always good to start with a session so yeah. that you can experience it. And uh, I mean, not everybody does. I mean, I have people that used to come to my classes um, that, you know, because Theta Healing wasn't so widely available back then. I was in part of the beginning of Theta Healing, uh, in the beginning before all the books and things started to come out. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of people hadn't heard of it. They ended up in the class. Nowadays, most people that come to a Theta Healing class, they've already had a session, know somebody, read a book, something. So they're really mm -hmm. aware before they even get there, which is a benefit to them. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okay. So for all of the practitioners out there or for somebody, in your opinion, um, why would you recommend them take a course or take a introductory course? Um, what can it offer their practice essentially? Well, what it is, it gives you a tool to be able to remove emotional stuff. It helps you, I guess, to be able to see the body more than just a physical. Right. Just physical. Because I think just seeing the body as physical is very limiting sometimes when you're trying to um, help someone with pain or sickness. Mm -hmm. And I think we're getting the medical Western medicine and energy medicine are getting closer and closer together, which is great yeah. because we have this separation and there's more to everything in regards to helping someone live their best life than just the physical. So if you could take any modality, theta healing is one of my top ones, one of my faves. Mm -hmm. But anything that would introduce you to that part of yourself that allows you to tap into someone's energy and understand what's going on and have actually a tool to do something about it. Because it's not like, it's one thing to tap in, like when I was doing cranial sacral therapy, and I could feel that there's something more to help these people, but I didn't have a tool to do it. Mm -hmm. So it's good to have a tool. And that's why I like Theta Healing, because it really dives into the brainwaves. It dives into emotions and, and feelings and how to shift and change them and and then being able to replace negative energy with positive energy that it just really works, like yeah. really solidly works. Yeah. So that's what I really like about it. And I think that if you're working with the physical body, it's physical or emotional. I've had uh, counselors come and take Theta Healing too to add to their practice mm -hmm. so they can understand that part about to help their clients even more. And the more information that you can have, if you're going to deal with people in how we are as beings, I think the better. Right. Just from physical to emotional to spiritual, uh, you just can't separate them all. I mean, you can, but if you're really into wanting to make a difference in someone's lives, the more you understand all this as a whole, the better off. Yeah. Everyone's going to be. Yeah, I, I really like that because I know one of the main struggles, I think, for physiotherapists, again, um, might be that that psychological, biopsychosocial um, belief system factor to patients. You know, we, we learn a lot of that physical hands-on stuff and working with all of that. But when we 
when we get introduced to the biopsychosocial or the psychological part of the assessment, that's something that someone like a physiotherapist may not be 100%, I guess, um, um, confident in. You know, we don't have that tool. So I think, it, like, like you said, it just adds a tool to our box to kind of further help patients. Because I think emotion and belief system is a huge part and a huge factor in um, people's lives and people's rehabilitation goals and things like that, that we don't often, we don't often, I guess, associate with um, pain or with these things. So I, I really, um, I really like that. But when, um, how, how do people kind of book with you? So how would somebody come in contact with you? Um, I know you mentioned your website. If you don't me- mind mentioning that again, um, what maybe timeframes, how would like an initial assessment, um, are, is there an initial assessment, like the timeframes to your treatments? Um, how does all that work with you? Okay. Well, my website is um, thetahealinginstitute.ca, mm-hmm. and there's lots of information you can read about that. Um, you would email me which would be Cindy Lou or Cindy Theta seven mm-hmm. at gmail.com. And you could email me with a request. My sessions I offer are 30 minutes and 45 minutes. Okay. So 30 minutes are $75 and mm-hmm. 45 minutes are 110. So mm-hmm. there's no real initial assessment. It's just a matter of you make the appointment wherever you are in the world that it works. Yep. Um, and like I say, I do over the phone. I have done Skype ones before. Like I say, I'd rather do just audio. And, yep. um, we set up a time that works and then, you know, the financial transactions go through usually e-transfer if it's in within Canada, if not, then PayPal. And yeah, it's pretty simple. And basically all you have to do when you're asking me, I actually can answer this question that you asked me earlier now to prepare yourself yeah. um, for the session is just decide what it is that you want to work on. Okay. Like have something that you want to work on um, instead of, Oh, I don't know. My life sucks. You know, well, yeah. there, that's a pretty broad <laughs> of what that means exactly. So have something that you actually do want to change so mm-hmm. that we have a starting point. And I know like 30 minutes, people go, oh, that's not very long. I can do a lot in 30 minutes mm-hmm. because it's mostly why people take the longer time is because they like to have a little bit of a conversation sometime leading into it because some people like to just, they need a little bit more time and that's fine too. Mm-hmm. Um, most of my pra- my sessions from people that have seen me before 30 minutes because they they just know they phone and they go i this is what's happening i understand mm-hmm. this and this and this and this is what i need to change and then we just go right into why and mm-hmm. then away we go so that's how you would get a hold of me uh like i guess it's it is the the facebook era right and i'm on right. instagram too so okay any of those places people can contact me and i also have a uh business manager who will sometimes respond to you her name is racy uh, she, her contact information is on there too. So if you can't get me, you'll get her. Okay. Yeah, we, we set something up. Awesome. And I will post all of that in the show notes below everybody listening. So be sure to check all of that out. Um, but yeah, thank you so much, Cindy Lou, for um, being on the podcast. Thank you for talking about all of that. I think that was very informative and I think, I hope everybody listening enjoyed it as much as I did because again, it's things that you don't often think about that everybody I think experiences all the time um, and not everybody may be willing to kind of work on. So um, agreed. I, I, I really thank you for um, being on the podcast. Thanks a lot for inviting me, Jordan. I, I love um, talking about this stuff. I could talk about it forever and ever. And yeah. Again. And so it's, a, and then, yeah. So thank you for having me. This has been great. Yes, no worries. All right. And everybody, again, everything will be in the show notes, Cindy Lou's contact information, her website, and all of that. So be sure to check that out. All righty, everyone. That is it for this week's episode. Thank you all for listening to episode three. Next week, I have another exciting guest. And be sure before you leave to, if you're listening on Apple Podcasts, please give my podcast a five-star review. It really helps out the podcast. And be sure to hit that subscribe button on wherever you're listening to stay updated for 
all new episodes. All of these episodes will be released every Tuesday and hitting that subscribe button just means that they will be all readily downloaded for when you open up the app and are ready to listen. Thank you all for listening and I will talk to you all next week.